Hey guys, welcome into the Wells Tech Garage for this week's episode of Counterpoint. I'm joined here once again by Adam, the parts and catalog master, the specialist. <laughs> um, thanks for being here, Adam. Thanks for having me again. So today we are going to be talking about EGR valves, and in particular, the EGR valve on the 644 diesel engine. Yes, the part number here at Wells, EGR 4511. 4511, okay. We're getting a lot of calls on this valve because it looks different. All right. So, so let's take it out of the box take, and take a look. First of all. Oh, look at that bubble wrap. wrap. Awesome. Yeah. Fun little toy to play exactly. with. Exactly. <laughs> so here's EGR valve. This okay. It's a Ford OE design change. I'll tell you that right off the bat. All this, right. The big difference in this one, there are no, no cooling passages on. Okay. So the so. OE valve, the valve that came on your vehicle, on your 6.4, on the early design, was a EGR valve that had two coolant passages on it. That's right. If you actually look in the service procedure here, I pulled it right out of all data, you can see right in this picture here that we have two coolant hoses running to this thing. And that's this where the valve, confusion uh, arises. Right. This valve doesn't have any of those passages, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And uh, there's service procedure. Okay. And we so, include this in the box, right? Yes, we do. And if we don't have in the box, give us a call. Be okay. glad to get it to you. All right. So, perfect. So. so what does this service procedure exactly entail? So. It looks like uh, all 6.4 diesels built after a certain date will no longer incorporate this cooling circuit uh, through the EGR valve. The EGR valve has been updated to reflect this change. Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, it will be necessary to cut nine inches off from the engine side of the coolant degas bottle vent line. Refer to figure one. Okay. The existing coolant supply line routed from the EGR cooler to the EGR valve will need to be removed and discarded. Okay. And then you want to reroute the cut vent line to the EGR, uh, excuse me, to, to the coolant vent port of the EGR cooler. So basically what you're doing here, in a couple less words, is you're just taking the EGR valve out of the loop, right? Exactly. You're just running the coolant directly into the EGR cooler, mm -hmm. um, not into the into EGR the valve. valve itself. That's correct. So for whatever reason, Ford decided that they didn't need to run coolant into the EGR valve on this engine. Um, so they did a design That's change. That's what we're looking at, yep. So we get those calls down in the tech department as well, but uh, we get a couple other ones as well. And, and the first one is removal of this EGR valve. You know, this thing's got a, a decent size uh, bore on here um, in terms of diameter and in length. So this thing actually gets stuck down inside of the engine, down inside of its bore, because of all of the you know, carbon buildup and everything. This thing's sitting in the exhaust. Uh, it, it becomes very hard to remove. And the other important fact is when you're removing this thing, it needs to come straight out because of the, the diameter and everything. If you, if you were to tweak it one way or the other, it's not going to pull out nicely. It's exactly. not going to want to come out. So according to the service procedure, you're supposed to use this wonderful Ford part number 303-1267. That's a special tool. That's a puller. If you look at it here up on the screen, you can see that it is a special puller that is made specifically for this EGR valve. Now the problem with this puller is the fact that it costs more than the EGR valve itself. Anywhere between $450 to $650 for this puller when I was just doing a quick internet search of the, uh, of the number. So now it is the right way to do it, to use this puller because it is going to pull it straight up. But I have heard some success stories from people calling us up that they were able to get it out without using that puller. But guys, just use you know common sense and, and basic automotive knowledge. Don't go in there with a pry bar, you know your your four foot pry bar, and trying to get that thing you're out. Gonna you're break gonna break these ears off, you know. You're gonna that break. Gonna stuck, yeah, know? exactly. You're yes. gonna break off the tabs if they if they break off. If you break this EGR valve, think of how hard it's gonna be for the next guy to put that puller on there. If the puller's got nothing to grab on, you maybe just created an even bigger problem. So don't mm -hmm. force it. Just you know, if it, if it feels loose, try and wiggle it, try and, you know, just try and get it out, but don't break anything, you know. Like you can really, really create, create some issues, um, especially if you end up not being able to get it out and then the puller has nothing to grip on, then you're replacing, you know, even more components for an even, right. even greater amount of money. Mm -hmm. All right, then the last call we get is um, referring to uh, the adaptive memory for this EGR valve. You know, sometimes Parts get installed in vehicles and people don't realize that there's another step involved with it. You know, our, our modern day vehicles are learning and adapting to the way the parts are on our vehicle. You know, we've seen this with crank sensors, we've seen this with all kinds of different things. Brake pedal switches even now in some vehicles need to be relearned. 
The CGR valve is no different. When this valve is installed into the vehicle, it needs to have its adaptive values reset or it might not operate properly. Right? So your computer is going to learn the way the old EGR valve reacted to certain conditions, certain driven pulse widths from the computer. If it is not relearned, if it's not adaptives aren't reset, it could set a check engine light, the part might not function properly. Even though the part itself is perfectly fine, the computer's not, not, not doing the right, uh, the right thing. And they'll think it's defective at that point when it really isn't. So. Exactly. So in order to clear this adaptive memory, you do need to have a full function scan tool. You're not able to just do a simple codes clear or anything with a code reader. You need to be able to get into the PCM and perform, it's, it's a standalone EGR adaptive reset. It's not part of the Ford Keep Alive memory. It is a standalone EGR reset. So make sure you go and uh, have that adaptive reset done. You know, especially if you're at home, say you're doing this in your garage at home, most guys at home don't have a full function scan tool. You might have to take this thing in afterwards and just get that reset so you can have full functionality of your EGR system on your diesel. That's right. All right. So, that's I think that's our, about it. That's basically it right there. That's the, that's the spiel for the EGR 4511. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, just a little bit different looking of a part. We got rid of the coolant hoses on there and uh, make sure when you're removing it, if you're not able to get it out, you're going to have to get that special tool. So, that's it. all right, guys, I think that's, that's about it for, it for today. If you guys like what you see, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, uh, share the video, you know, all that fun stuff, and definitely keep checking back here for more videos. So, we'll see you guys again next time in the Wells Tech Garage.